The Toyota 4Runner in current form is over a decade old, and the powertrain is even older than that. What that results in is a tried and true vehicle, which of course is what you want when you venture off the tarmac. This, of course, is the 4Runner appeal. The equal balance of off-road prowess, on-road comfort, and unwavering reliability. So we're all familiar with the 4Runner at this point, and this is the Venture Special Edition trim, which is kind of Toyota's concession because this product is super old. However, it has an unwavering cult-like following in the off-roader community, so it begs the question, does Toyota even need to do this? Now, the off-roaders and overlanding faithfuls will know about the most rugged and off-road ready 4Runner that you can get, and that is the TRD Pro, of course. However, those TRD Pros are about 50 grand, and with dealer markups, you're looking way north of that. So, if you want to save a little bit of money, the Venture Special Edition comes at about 45 grand, which is five grand less than MSRP, and you won't deal with dealer markups. So you're gonna save a good bit of money there. So let's get into details. Now we're gonna start with behind the wheel impressions because this is what really stood out to me during my week with the 4Runner Venture rather than the TRD Pro. The TRD Pro comes with a big knobby <laughs> all-terrain tire as part of its TRD Pro package. You get a special wheel and tire package. The Venture Special Edition removes that all-terrain tire in replacement of a more normal all-season tire. This is a huge difference in reducing road noise, and refinement of the cabin, and more steering feel. I'd like to be able to know what my front wheels are doing. Jeep Wrangler people and TRD Pro people, it has a nice, mild and calm, more car-like, it's still very much a body-on-frame SUV, but you have more response from the steering rack, you have a better idea of what your front axle is doing. Now, you still have really big tires and a lot of sidewalls, so there's a lot of give, and you have to really go deep in your steering lock to get this thing to turn, but you have an absolutely more quiet ride, and you have less wind noise, less tire roar, and you have a better feeling ride overall. Which brings me to throttle response. This is a four liter naturally aspirated V6 under the hood. It makes 270 horsepower and 278 pound feet of torque. So it's not winning any drag races, but it's not meant to. It's plenty of power for off-road. It's enough, it's what you need, and it gets the job done. Here's my big problem with, with the 4Runner. Um, it's, it's got the same amount of gears as my 92 BMW 3 Series. That car's older than me. And it's the same number of gears. It's five speed automatic transmission. And this doesn't help with fuel economy. All week I observed about 15 to 16 MPG. It's rated for 16 city and 19 highway, but I was getting about 16, 17, and granted I had it idling to film and do that all sort of thing. But in any case, if you're gonna be making long trips, daily commutes in this thing, be prepared for that fuel economy hit. Ultimately, I don't wanna to spend too much time on the behind the wheel road presence because it's a body on frame SUV and you don't expect it to be all that great. But I wanna make sure that I mentioned the fact that it is a lot more refined than I thought it was going to be, especially due to the fact that you have that different tire from the TRD Pro. A lot less noise, a lot more refinement, and better steering feel behind the wheel. Now let's talk about the outside and get into some serious details. Now I won't go into every nook and cranny and stylistic component of this thing. Overall, I'll say that it is a very classic and true to personality boxy SUV shape. It's very iconic, not quite as much as a G-Wagon or a Wrangler, but you absolutely know that this thing is pretty rugged, especially with standard uh, Yakima uh, roof basket on top. But I do want to point out the differences between the Venture and the TRD Pro, because that's, again, what we're kind of focusing on here. Now, up front, it is immediately apparent that you don't have the TRD grill. Specifically, it's that mesh grill that says Toyota across the front. Here, you have everything blacked out. Uh, and it's, it looks kind of cool, it's imposing, but you miss that Toyota uh, grill, and that's really what you want if you're a TRD faithful. Now, below that, you also lose that TRD aluminum silver painted skid plate with that red TRD lettering on it. You still get a skid plate over your engine, over your oil pan, over your trans and transfer case, but it's not that silver painted TRD rah rah look at me skid plate. Now what you trade for in lack of TRD-ness up front, you get in return black 
badging and black everything everywhere. You've got a black grill in front, black badge on top of that. Around the side, you have black wing mirrors, black uh, door handles, and then around back, you have a black spoiler on the roof. You've of course got your black Yakima uh, roof basket, and then you have black uh, logoing and embossments on the tailgate. And overall, it just looks really cool. Uh, it's, it adds that little bit of flair, that little bit of individuality, and that little bit of style that you would get over something like a TRD off-road or an SR5, but not quite as exclusive as the, the TRD stamping all over the body. Now I wanna go back to the side of the vehicle because there's a couple things that I missed. I did say that they have the black door handles and you have the keyless entry and that's all well and good. However, there's something that you're missing on the side and it's the fact that you don't have that TRD badge on your C-pillar. This isn't a TRD. It's not a TRD off-road. It's not a TRD sport. It's not anything like that. So it's a Venture Special Edition. There's nothing on the C-pillar. Now granted, how much does one of those little plaques cost, maybe like five bucks. Buy it, put it on if you really want to. But one of the things to also note is you will have a TRD wheel package. Not the tires like we talked about, but the wheels itself. They're the black kind of powder coated matte finished wheels and they look really cool and they're nice for off-roading because they're kind of beadlock style. Now I want to take a quick time out while we're on the side of the vehicle and talk about really the only things you're missing from a utility and practicality standpoint between the TRD Pro and the Venture Off-Road. There's two things. There's the fact that the TRD Pro comes with Fox shocks. You don't get that on the Venture trim. And this TRD, the TRD Pro comes with the bigger uh, all-terrain tires on it. So you get a more road mild presence set of rubber and you get a normal shock set on the Venture trim. But realistically, you still get plenty of articulation. You still have plenty of travel in the suspension on the Venture trim and do you really need the tires? If you're gonna be going off-roading and over overlanding a lot, sure, fine. But more likely than anything, if you're gonna be actually truly overlanding hardcore, you're gonna swap out suspension, you're gonna swap out wheels and tires anyway. So, might not be a bad way to go. You still get the skid plate, it's not all fancied up with the TRD badging, but you still get all of the underbody armor that would come on the TRD Pro. Now I'm gonna throw a couple numbers at you because they're the same between the Venture and the TRD. 9.6 inches of ground clearance, 33 degree approach angle, and 26 degree departure angle. Again, these are the same between the Venture and the TRD Pro. Actually the same between the TRD Pro Venture and the TRD Off-Road package. So no advantage there. They also have all the same technology features. They have crawl control, terrain select, hill start, A-track. All of it is the same between the Venture and the TRD Pro. So really no advantage between either one as far as uh, your approach and departure angles and your, your off-road electronic assists. So overall, from the outside and behind the wheel, the only thing that you give up between the Venture and the TRD Pro is the shocks and the, and the tires. And to be honest, this forerunner and majority of people's forerunners are gonna spend 90% of their lives on tarmac, commuting getting to a trail or whatever. So you wanna have something a little bit more livable, comfortable, and more refined when you're on the tarmac. And that's the wheel and tire package that's on the Venture trim, not the TRD Pro. Now we're gonna jump inside the 4Runner and I'm gonna start at the back because it's my favorite thing. And it's the fact that the rear windshield goes down. It, you can operate it from outside the car uh, or inside the cabin, but it's super nice to have that rear glass that goes down. And not just from an off-road perspective, but also uh, if you're on the highway, you can have that down without having blasting wind and sound coming at your face. It's a nice cool breeze. Um, honestly, I'm an automotive journalist. I'm constantly hanging outside the back of trucks and cars and all sorts of things trying to get footage and having rear windshields that go down, super, super helpful. Uh, it's actually a lot safer to get footage that way too. So just kind of a side note, but in any case, there's also nice goodies in the trunk here as well. You have the optional um, kind of cargo deck lid that slides out. You can support 440 pounds on that. Super nice for loading up with beer if you don't wanna be reaching all the way into the, the trunk. So went to Costco this week, that was great. Uh, you also have a couple of uh, outlets back there. You have a normal house outlet and you have a car outlet, but other than that, you have a, a 40, 20, 40 splitting rear seat. Uh, folds nice and flat, so if you wanted to sleep back there, you totally could. Uh, otherwise, the, the cabin, the, <laughs> the cargo area is massive, honestly, so uh, super nice there as well. Oh, and I totally forgot about the Yakima um, roof basket, so you can store stuff up there as well. Plenty of cargo storage in this thing. Now that we're up to the rear seats, it's a pretty standard rear seat. I'm 6'1", and I can sit behind myself pretty comfortably. I have about an inch or two of knee room in front of me. The weird thing is headroom. Now, you can see that in the roof, they have cut out space for your head. So there's the normal roof, gets to about right here in front of your eyes, and then it goes up. So you do have room for your head, although it is just about an inch. Uh, the interesting thing is, since it is a body-on-frame SUV, 
you sit up really high. So when you're in the back seat, you kind of feel like you're stadium seated in behind the, the front seat people. It's, it's an interesting feeling, but yeah, that's just what it is. And then as we get up front, this is, this is where it becomes pretty apparent that it's an older truck. Uh, from a design perspective, it's very simple. And this is across Toyota's entire lineup, and that's just kind of the way that they do things. If it's not broke, don't fix it. If you overcomplicate it, it's gonna break, and then you're gonna need to fix it. So keep it simple, big tactile knob buttons and switches, super easy to interact with. It is an upgraded uh, infotainment system, and you have Apple CarPlay, and you have Android Auto, and all the stuff that you would need. And honestly, it just kind of makes sense. It's nice to have all that stuff. Uh, it's really easy to use and it's not confusing and that's honestly one of the best things that I can say about an infotainment system these days And then as you get down by the shifter, of course, you have your transmission lever and you have your five speeds And we won't get into that because we covered that um, Two cup holders the nice thing about these is they have rubber inserts that you can take out Not only is that great for washing them out if you spill stuff, but you can fit big uh, Like water bottles canteens, whatever you need. There's two of those up front super super nice I use them all week uh, you also have your rear windshield glass that you can you know, put up and down. Uh, all the windows are auto up down. Uh, you also have heated seats. And to control all of your off-road assists, you look above you. Uh, right next to your sunroof controls, you have your A-Track and you have your terrain select and all that sort of thing. It's all up there, so you can take care of that up there. And it feels kind of cool, like adjusting ceiling buttons and switches. You feel kind of like a fighter pilot, so that's always cool. And then as you move back down in front of you, you have the wheel and it's it's the same wheel that's in freaking every Toyota truck sort of thing, and it's fine. It has uh, good functionality on it. It makes sense. You can navigate through your menus pretty easily. You've got your adaptive cruise uh, and your lane keep uh, buttons in there, and it makes sense. Uh, honestly, th the whole cabin from an interior perspective is simple and it's comfortable, to be honest, more than anything. And yeah, it's nice you have your synthetic leather and you have TRD stamped in the, or you know, stitched into the headrest, and that's kind of nice on the front seat. So that's really the only um, thing that mentions TRD within this venture trim. But from an interior perspective, it's simple, it's nice, and it just works. And now we find ourselves at the final thoughts, and basically it comes down to this. Uh, Toyota dropped off this 4Runner at my house and I was expecting honestly the TRD Pro to show up. So when the Venture showed up I was like, that's a weird looking TRD, it doesn't have the grill, it doesn't have the skid plate. Then of course I went out and figured out that it wasn't the TRD Pro and I was kind of bummed to be honest, but then I took it out on the road and I drove it. And the things that I said on the driving portion, they, they've, they've remained true. I mean, it's, it's more tame, it's more mild-mannered on the road. Uh, the tires make a huge difference, I can't stress that enough. Uh, you have more feeling from your steering, it's quieter, it's all, it's, it's all good. Um, so the more time I spent with this, and the more time I spent thinking about it, the more I was like, this is the, this is the TRD Pro like 90% of people should get. Because 90% of their peop the people are just looking for something that looks cool, and the, the Venture trim does. I mean, you have the blacked out badging, you have the black wing mirrors, the door handles, you have the roof basket, and you have the TRD wheels. The only thing that you're really missing from an aesthetic standpoint is the C-pillar badge and the, the front skid plate, and of course the grill. But other than that, it's still incredibly unique, and you still have like 90% uh, of the capability of the TRD Pro. You're just missing the tires and the Fox shocks. So my opinion, this is the forerunner that I would get. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and leave that thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know what you would pick. Would you spend a little bit more and get a little bit more resale value with the TRD Pro? Or would you save a little bit of money and go with the Venture? Let me know down in the comments and I'll see you next time.